Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. In today's video I'll be showing you how can you make this interesting device. This is just a simple device which will allow you to test any Zener diode. Usually when designing electronics projects sometimes it's necessary depending on the design and the role of the project from a simple PWM driver you may come across the need of a particular component which will help you stabilize the circuit and as well protect it. At first glance it looks like an ordinary diode but this one is not a typical diode. Now what's a Zener diode and what role it has? To keep it simple a Zener diode is a special type of a diode designed to reliably allow current to flow backwards on a certain set reverse voltage known as ZV or Zener voltage is rich. Now usually you can test a Zener diode with a normal multimeter or a simple component tester like this one I have here. But it can be tested by connecting it up to an external power supply with a current limiting resistor in series. Let's choose a random Zener diode and connecting it to a supply of around 30 volts through a 3.3k resistor. And as you can see it is a 15 volts Zener diode. Anyway this process usually is quite time demanding if you have to find a suitable diode for your project. Now you can get a diode Zener kit like this one I have here. But still you have to know what the part number is mean and as well it's quite tedious till you get it. Now here it is the schematic, I try to keep it simple as possible, the board will be powered by a simple LiPo cell and like that it will be battery operated. This will be necessary to make the device simple to operate and as well without any external wiring attached to it. The main core of this board is as an integrated boost module based on XL6009E1. Now that's a bit overkill but it will help because the voltage of it can be regulated and on top of that a simple voltmeter will indicate the voltage of the output of the bus converter and as well the Zener breakdown voltage. The bus converter can output up to roughly 38 volts which is roughly for this tester and as well it's a safe voltage to work with it but anyway you have to be very careful when working with high voltages. If you are planning to repeat this project you'll be doing at your own risk so be aware. Now let's start making the board starting first by grabbing all the required components and as well like usually I'll be soldering everything on a prototyping board which it is usually called Vero board. By starting first to add the TP5046 battery charging board but first we have to add the pin headers to it for a cleaner look and as well to the XL009E1 bus converter and as well to the small digital voltmeter. Now let's start making the board starting first with the TP5046 battery controller and so on. Now for the first test I will be powering it straight from the output of the TP5046 battery controller which doesn't have any battery yet connected to it. This is done just to see if the board is working and indeed it's working. Now the circuit is working as it should, let's move on to the battery next. For the battery I'll be using this one time used LiPo disposable battery pack which it seems that the battery in it has run flat. But after opening it up we see that we have a decent LiPo cell inside of around 650 mAh which will be plenty capacity for this Zener tester. And after desoldering the battery from his board I have covered it with Captain tape due to the reason the battery cell doesn't have any heat shrinks around it and its outer shell it is conducting. Now the battery will be mounted on another Vero board and it will be connected with some small connector. Like that it will be easy because if I will want to change the battery in the near future it will be easy to do so. Let's connect the battery and see if the battery is good. Well it's okay but I think the battery is low. So let's put it on charge for a while. Now we got the two boards and as well we have to mount the Zener board on top of the board which contain the battery and for that I will be using some plastic standoff. But before that let's secure the battery wire connector with some hot glue on the Zener board and after that let's stack them momentarily. Let's put it on charge. Now meanwhile it's charging I took my time to design a little 3D case for it using 1 to 3D design, nothing fancy and after slicing it with Cura I have used my broken but still working Xvico 3DS 3D printer to print it. For the printing material I have used some orange PLA plus. Now the case took a bit of time to get it done but the case turned out to be quite nice. And after the battery has been fully charged I have separated the board once again and installed them under the case. But here we got a problem, can you spot it? Yes, the micro switch can be switched with the top case on and after fixing that it's fitting like it should. After the case is mounted it looks and feels like an off the shelf device. Now let's test it, here like you see not so long ago I got a case full of Zener diode with the value being unknown because the label has come off and as well I got a second box which I have done it in the past but using the power supply method and after some minutes I was done measuring all the unknown value diodes and make it as well a new label using paper tape on which I have written all the value of the Zener diodes and after that we have my two Zener boxes all tested and measured now about the project if you are planning to make it all the necessary files are down in the video description section I hope you have learned something interesting today, but now I have to say goodbye. I hope you all see you all in my next video. Until then, have a nice day and thank you very much for watching. See ya!